Congratulations on all that you have achieved thus far. As you begin your careers in the next stage of your lives, you will also need to be informed about saving and investing for the future. When we save money, we have a number of choices on where to park our savings. These could be checking and savings accounts, money market accounts, bonds, stock, real estate investments in precious metals like gold and silver. Where we put our savings determines how these savings will grow in value. This is the return on your investment. While we would love a high return, we also have to be mindful about the chance that some of our investments may lose value. That is the risk inherent in investing. I am Dr. Frank D'Souza, Professor of Finance and currently the Chair of the Department of Finance at Loyola. I have also, over the last 10 years, thought and mentored the students who have managed the Selinger Applied Portfolio Fund, a half a million dollar equity only fund created from Loyola's endowment. This is an experience that I have enjoyed and one that has helped numerous students and me grow as equity investors. Before I continue, I would just like to clarify that during this presentation, I will use the words stock and equity interchangeably. So I am here to share my thoughts on investing in stocks, not how to pick individual stocks to invest in, but more generally to help you understand what investing in the stock market entails and how you could begin your investing journey if you've always considered it, but were just unsure how to take the first step. I will also give you advice that I wish someone had given me when I first invested in the stock market. So to begin, why should you consider investing in stocks? To put it simply, over the long run, stocks have proven to be one of the best, if not the best, investment class. As younger investors, you would thus benefit from having a portion of your longer term investments in equity. It is also now common in this low interest rate environment for retirees to have a significant portion of their nest egg in equity. Now there are some barriers to investing in stocks. And the reason why many individuals may shy away from investing in the stock market. Some of these are the impression that investing in the stock market is extremely risky or not being fully informed about the steps to begin investing. Also, a lack of knowledge about how to do research, what to invest in, and a lack of time and resources to dedicate towards this endeavor. And of course, a feeling that it is just too complicated. Now, my summary of these points is from remembering what it was to be a first-time investor myself. It was a forgettable experience. I first tried investing in the stock market just after I graduated college. After working for a year, I had accumulated some savings and out of the blue decided that I should probably invest in stocks. The market at that time seemed to be on a bull run and I wanted a piece of that. I opened a brokerage account, took all of my savings and invested it in one stock. The logic that I ran with was, well, the stock market is unpredictable. It goes up and down randomly. And so I figured that I probably had a 50-50 chance of this investment doing well. I picked a company that had a long history, a firm that everyone had heard about, and I took the plunge. Unfortunately, I learned the hard way that past performance is not necessarily a predictor of the future. And I lost half my investment in about eight months. It was a depressing start to my investment journey. Well, I eventually sold that stock and through a series of lucky investments, was able to get back to where I was when I started. It was about a year from the time that I had made my initial investment. The whole experience was so stressful that I sold off all my holdings and swore off investing in stocks for the next seven years. Over the course of that time, I still followed the stock market. I read and kept up with current events. When I was eventually in a frame of mind to get back into stock investings, I now had a better idea on what I needed to watch out for. I had more reasonable expectations and better understood myself as an investor. My experiences from that point on have been much more pleasant and profitable. Honestly, as time passes, I keep evolving as an investor, but there are things that I wish someone had told me when I first started investing. 
This is what I would like to share with you. To begin, ask yourself, what is your risk profile? This scale moves from investors who have a high tolerance for risk, called risk seekers, to those that have little appetite for uncertainty, those who are highly risk averse. The range of investments within the equity market can accommodate both kinds of investors and those in between. Secondly, how much time can you dedicate to research? Depending on what your answer is, you would either be a passive investor, that's someone who buys and holds their investments for the long horizon, over a year, or an active investor, someone who buys and sells frequently. On the most extreme end, an active investor would be a day trader. My advice for a first-time investor would be to take the passive investing route until you build your knowledge of firms, sectors, and the events that impact them. The third question that you would ask yourself is, do you have savings that you can block for three to five years? This is important. If you have funds set aside for an upcoming event, let's say a wedding in six months, I would strongly advise against investing it in the stock market, simply because you cannot ride out a sudden downturn and you will have to sell your investments at a loss if the time has come to spend that money. Contrast that scenario with the financial crisis of 2008. Even with a massive crash, stocks bounced back in four years. For those investors who were able to stay invested, the negative impact was, for the most part, insignificant. Now some advice. Look to diversify your portfolio. This essentially means that you should spread your investments into multiple stocks and in multiple sectors. This helps reduce your overall risk. However, if you do not have a large amount to invest in the beginning, this is going to be tough. And it would cost you in terms of commissions as you try to set up this varied portfolio. What I would recommend is to look at ETFs, exchange traded funds, as an alternative. For example, an ETF that goes by the ticker SPY allows you to invest in all of the stocks in the S&P 500 index for about $350 a share. You have other options too, ETFs that would allow you to invest in a collection of stocks from each sector, financials, technology, industrials, or a particular investing strategy like a dividend strategy, a value strategy, or a growth investing strategy. As a passive buy and hold investor, this also allows you to alleviate the amount of time that you would need to allocate to a doing research. You would, of course, need to do your due diligence on the ETFs that you may choose to invest in. Next, be aware of and try to control your emotions. If you have never invested in stocks before, the emotional roller coaster that may accompany your initial investments, and even your future ones, may come as a bit of a surprise. When the market goes up, you will feel euphoric. And when the market dips, it will not feel pleasant. The key is not to react with haste and sell in a panic. If you panic, you will only succeed in converting a paper loss into a real loss. There are strategies to help with this, like setting a stop loss at a certain percentage that you're comfortable with, for example, 5% or maybe 20% if you are able to handle more risk. Next, try not to get overconfident and keep learning. The impact of psychology investing, an area called behavioral finance is now increasingly mainstream. There are many behavioral biases that cause us to make investment mistakes. Overconfidence is something that can adversely impact even the most seasoned investors. The stock market over the long horizon follows a random walk with a positive drift. To put it simply, the day-to-day -day and month-to-month -month movements in stock prices are random. But over the long run, periods of five to 10 years, the overall stock market tends to move upward. This fits nicely with the narrative for a beginner making their initial foray into investing, buy and hold for a period of three to five years or beyond. In terms of timing the market, the ability to buy a stock when it is low and sell it when it's high is an investor's dream and the holy grail of investing. No investor has shown the ability to do this consistently. Hedge funds are the most informed, sophisticated investors in financial markets. It may thus be surprising to learn that less than half of all hedge funds 
beat the return of the S&P 500 index in any given year. Given how difficult it is to time the market, it has been suggested for small investors that a prudent way to invest would be to buy a small quantity of an ETF or a stock multiple times a year. This strategy can average out your cost basis and helps take away the stress of wondering if you are investing when the stock price is too high. This could also allow you to actually begin investing. Many investors just never begin investing because they cannot overcome this timing issue. A colleague of mine once shared how he used the strategy. He bought one share of Microsoft every month ever since the firm went public in 1986. I think that he did quite well. To conclude, I would like to summarize. As a beginner, consider using ETFs to diversify your portfolio in a cheap and efficient manner. Read up on current events and try to focus on following about 10 to 15 stocks or ETFs. I like to put these as a list in my iPhone stocks app. If you're not ready to invest your money yet, then try investing through a stock simulation. MarketWatch is one such platform. If you make it competitive, include family and friends, you will still experience the thrill of investing without the risk of using real money. The idea is to have some skin in the game. Either your pride, if you're learning through a simulation, or real money, if investing in the stock market. Once you take that step, the desire to learn more about your investments and the events that can impact their performance will follow. Over the years, I have come to realize that investing, especially in stocks, does allow investors to reap significant financial rewards. But more importantly, in my opinion at least, it also pays off by helping investors develop an increased awareness of the world around us and helps us along on the path to lifelong learning. For me, as someone who benefited from 10 years of Jesuit education, this fit in nicely with the philosophy that I grew up with. It is my hope that it will do the same for you as well.